Hi, Dr. Peterson. I'm a 25-year-old female. I think I'm afraid of intimacy and closeness. The thought of a man taking care of me and having to cede some of my control to create room for that scares me. I want to try and be in a romantic relationship, but I don't know how to allow it. What advice do you have? Okay, well, let's take your questions apart, first of all. I think I am afraid of intimacy and closeness. Okay, fair enough. And, and I, the first thing I would tell you is that does not make you unique. And I'm not saying that in a manner that's designed to be condescending or insulting. I'm just saying that, well, that's a very common fear. You're not alone. You may think you're alone in that, but you definitely aren't. And it's also a justified fear. I mean, if you allow someone to be close to you, then you open yourself up to them and they can hurt and betray you. So, of course, there's reason to be afraid. So, so what do you do about that? Well, there's reason to be afraid of lack of intimacy and distance. You want to be alone for the rest of your life? That's a frightening thought. In all likelihood, it's not that easy to get through life on your own. You know, it's lonesome and difficult. And if, if you're in trouble, you don't have someone to help you out and you don't have someone to help when they're in trouble and you don't have anyone to share your triumphs with and all of that. So that's not good. So you might be afraid of intimacy, but you should be at least as afraid of its lack. And so maybe those fears can balance. You know, you say, well, I'm afraid of intimacy, so I won't go there. Well, you're not afraid enough of being alone. And so you got to bring that up. It's like, yeah, well, I don't want to be alone for the rest of my life. Assuming you don't. It seems like you don't because you said, um, I want to try to be in a romantic relationship. So you want this. And it does look like fear is inhibiting you to some degree because you're 25 and it sounds from the tone of your question that you haven't been in a relationship before. So it could easily be fear that's stopping you. So let's talk about trust for a second. You might say, well, why should I trust when I could get hurt? And that's a good question. You, you trust when you're naive because you don't know you can get hurt. And that's not ethical. That's not moral. It's not laudable. It's just naivety. Once you know you can be hurt, you trust as a courageous decision, knowing that if you trust someone, you can bring out the best in them and knowing that if you don't, you'll never see it. So it's a calculated risk. And it's an intelligent, calculated risk designed to move you and the other person to, to the best. So you, you can tell yourself that I'm going to take a risk. I might get hurt, but I'm going to take a risk knowing it's a risk. It's a reasonable risk. Don't be a fool, but it's a reasonable risk. Um, and, re and remember that you have some reason to be afraid of intimacy and closeness, but you know, you should also see both of those as um, positives on your side. To be intimate with someone means that you can share your thoughts with them and think things through with them, and you can share your triumphs and your disappointments and all of that. You broaden out your life, you broaden out your ability to solve problems. Um, you increase the probability, all things considered, that you're going to remain sane because two people who are communicating are generally saner than one person who is only thinking by themselves. Um, so, so you don't want to deprive yourself of that, even though it's somewhat dangerous to be hooked up with someone. Um, the thought of a man taking care of me and having to cede some of my control to create room for that scares me. Well, you got to think about how you've posed those questions seed some of your control. Well, are you sure that's what a relationship is about? Are you sure it's about seeding control? I mean, because there's an idea there that the relationship is going to be based on power. It's well, more you 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 end up with someone and you negotiate with them. And so, you know, where do you want to live? What career do you want to have? Where do you want to be educated? How many children do you want to have? Well, you don't know. Not really. You have your opinions and maybe you think I'm going to enforce those. I want that control. But maybe you think instead, well, wouldn't it be good to have the opportunity to discuss all those options with someone reasonable and come to a joint conclusion about what would be best for both of you moving forward? Maybe you could have your cake and eat it too. It's not seeding control. And I would say don't seed control. Like, you know, if there are things in your life that you absolutely need, then you want to negotiate for those. But the, 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 the essence of the relationship should be truthful negotiation, not control and power. And so you may be afraid because you have a misapprehension about what an optimal relationship or reasonable relationship would be. Um, the thought of a man taking care of me. Well, what do you mean by that exactly? I mean, do you, do you feel that it's, that you're going to be infantilized because someone is taking care of you, that they're going to want 
that they're going to want to um, decide what's best for you? Well, again, there's a power assumption lurking at the bottom of that that may not be helpful. To be taken care of means that, you know, someone is going to be looking out for you. And if they think something is good and helpful for you, are going to help you find it and maybe help provide that for you. But you're going to do that with them reciprocally. So you'll be taking care of each other. And that should be a positive thing on both fronts. I know that's idealistic and it's never perfect. And there is power struggles in a relationship, but that doesn't mean that the power dynamic is the basis for the relationship. It sounds to me like you're afraid of being dominated. And so you, you need to, I, I would say one thing that you should really strive to do when you enter a romantic relationship is not to avoid conflict, not to pretend that you're something other than you are. Because then you won't cede control and you won't fall prey to a pathological power dynamic. That often happens when people hide themselves because they don't trust and then they don't get what they want because how could they? They've never expressed it, you know, and, and then the other person dominates them because they've never expressed any of their own desires. Well, don't do that, you know, confer with yourself. A very useful marker for that is resentment. You know, if you're in a relationship with someone and you feel resentment climbing up on you, that's an indication of one of two things. You're either immature and unwilling to make the sacrifices necessary for the relationship or to negotiate fairly within the relationship. And then you should mature out of that as fast as you possibly can. And maybe you can do that through dialogue with your partner. Or the resentment might mean that you are in fact being taken advantage of and that you have something to say. And so don't let, if resentment pops up, find out whether you're immature or being oppressed. And if it's the latter, then you have something to say to enter into a negotiation. And the negotiation should be that you both get something better than either of you would have had if you were separate. Now, sometimes it's a zero sum game and only one person can win the negotiation, but that's, that's suboptimal and it certainly isn't the typical pattern for a good negotiation. So I want to try and be in a romantic relationship, but I don't know how to allow it. Well, the next thing I would say is, well, one step at a time. You don't have to do this any faster than you want to. So slow it down, you know? So how would a generic relationship start? Well, maybe you meet online. Well, what do you do first? You email each other. Excuse me if I'm out of touch. You email each other, you know, and you talk about trivial things to begin with just to see if the other person can even talk. And then, you know, you start sharing something. And when you do that, you see if the other person shares something of about equivalent emotional significance. And then maybe you share something deeper and see if they do the same in return. And you test each other out in writing. Maybe you exchange photographs and you see if you're curious and interested. And if you are, well, then maybe you meet for coffee in the middle of the afternoon in a well-lit location where there's lots of other people around. And you check the person out and you have a conversation and you see if you like them and if there's some attraction and if there's some curiosity. And maybe you meet for coffee three times because you're not in a hurry. You know, and then maybe you go to a movie and you see if you decide which movie or if he decides which movie and whether that can be negotiated about and whether you respond the same way and whether you have anything to talk about afterwards. And maybe that's all you do. Maybe you go to a movie five times, like you don't have to do this any faster than necessary. And so if you're afraid, don't bite off more than you can chew. You can adjust the rate at which the relationship progresses. And I would say, and I would say that to all the women who are listening, is like, slow the hell down. There's, you think that if you don't allow the relationship to proceed sexually, say at a very rapid rate, you're going to lose the interest of the guy. If that's the case, then lose it because it's not worth it. If he has any sense at all, if you slow things down and there's anything more there than just mere physical lust, let's say narrow minded, impulsive physical lust, which is nothing to sneer at, by the way, but is hardly the basis for a good relationship. Um, if he can't tolerate it slowing down, well, then He's not that interested in you or he's immature or it, so don't worry about that. Slow it down. It's, it's, it's to everyone's advantage to slow it down. So slow it down until you're not afraid. That's part of learning to negotiate with yourself. So get the hell out there and get in the romantic relationship. Try them out, but don't do them quickly and make sure that you keep your head about you and that you don't, you know, that you don't allow your cowardice essentially to interfere with your ability to express what you want. And you want to question your 
presupposition that the relationship is necessarily going to be predicated on something like power and control, because that's not a good relationship. That isn't how relationships should function. They're pathological when that's what they're about. And you should be afraid of them if that's what they're about. So get out there and learn how to do it, but do it slow. Play a bit, practice a bit, but get at it because you're 25. You know, it's time to get moving. You're, you'll be 30 a lot faster than you think. So get at it.